All right, let's get busy. Let's get busy. All right, here we go. Hey, yo, what it is and what's good, y'all? Welcome back to 280 Plus, the social media podcast where I take the conversations off the timeline and go beyond the tweets, the posts, the retweets, the mentions, all that, right? I'm your host, Lowe's Def, and I'm back here for episode 166, I believe. And if you're new to the channel, I'd like you to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Uh, if you want to join the conversation, leave a comment. If you know anybody that's interested in the content at all, you know, they they get into the stuff that we're talking about, um, you know, hit that share button. You know what I mean? And, and share with somebody uh, or share it to your own platforms. So, you know, you can help our audience, you know, grow. Um, how y'all doing, man? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? So, last week, y'all know I was I was a little bit late in in putting um, our recording out, and that's the thing too, man. That's like we we kind of got to get on a a, a, little, a slightly better schedule in terms of like recording and releasing. But we just you know we was really late with it, and my man Levi even you know kind of threw a little shot at me on his podcast. What are we doing? Because he was late, and then. It was funny because when I released mine, I, I, we didn't publish, we didn't publish 165 until Sunday. So really late, really late, um, in terms of, in terms of the normal flow of things. And basically, so it's like, it feels like we're doing like two and two in one week. Right. So, but, um, yeah, he, he ended up, he, he sent me a text and was like, yo man, you know, I just, remember I just came at you. Cause you, cause you ain't put no content out, and then you dropped uh, 165, and I'm like, yeah, man, you know, just was a little bit late, and uh, you know, like I said, just just the rigmarole of of how things are going, and um, you know, just making sure that we are staying consistent and putting stuff out, even if it's not, it might it might get a little gritty, it might get a little ugly at times, but we gonna we gonna put it out, and we are gonna you know give y'all what we got, what we got. So this week. Uh, we are going to address, um, so the Diddy, Diddy saga has come, come back to life, whatever, because we just had our first court appearance, right? We just had our first court appearance. Uh, we are going to talk about Love is Blind. Uh, talk a little bit, just, just you know, brush up on the hurricane. And um, we got some stories from NFL and, and, some, and some sports stories here. So we're going to talk a little bit about that type of stuff. But, like, before we move into our main topics, though, I just want to kind of address a couple of things. So I did put out a clip, one of my clips that talked about the topic of Jaguar, right? Right. So, um, you know, shit is getting, you know, now it's, I wouldn't say it's getting real, but like, you know, Jay-Z, Beyonce and, and their collective and their entities, they're not playing with these, they're not playing with, with, with this girl no more. And, um, this week we saw that, uh, a cease and desist was was filed against um Pierce Morgan, right? So just to clear a couple of things up, right? Just for and I'm not gonna call nobody dumb, but I just feel like sometimes with some of these topics, we we rush to say certain things, and I don't think that's people necessarily know what what is going on, right? So a cease and desist is is you're not suing them. Like a, a cease and desist is not suing somebody. A cease and desist is a legal. <laughs> a cease and desist is not suing somebody. A cease and desist is, is basically like a legal stern warning to, yo, knock it off, take that shit down before shit gets real. Right. So before it gets to, shit gets real. So, so that's that's kind of what happened. So there's a cease and desist filed against Pierce Morgan and whatever entities and things like that, right? So then, so of course, you know what I mean? Like, you know, we got to combat like facts with ignorance sometimes. And then, of course, people were like, well, you notice, you notice that they filed one against, against Pierce Morgan, not Jaguar Wright, whatever. And I'm thinking like, oh my God. So you don't know how this works, right? So... And and we're gonna we're gonna criticize her a little bit here in this in this about what I'm about to say, but that's how it works, right? So you you cease and desist whoever 
published published this right whoever kind of disseminated this content whoever created the content that's who you file this season this is so kind of even with uh, when we're talking about like music, right? So we hear, you know, oh, Drake filed a cease and desist, right? So like if you look on the legal documents, it's either going to have the artist because the artist is the one that's creating it or it's going to have the record label. The record label is going to be in it because they probably published it, right? So so is this is this is no different really, but what is different in terms of why nothing goes to Jaguar right or why Jaguar why are right? Why why her name is not on the cease and desist is because she has no platform. She probably, yeah, you know I mean, let's like if we keeping her, she probably barely got a pot to piss in for real, for real. So she has no platform. She did not publish anything. She is just a guest on on whatever platforms, right? So yes, we don't have to we don't file, have to follow cease and desist. But what it does is it it makes Pierce Morgan take down the interview. And what it also does is um, now other entities are going to be a little bit more reluctant. Now, Pierce Morgan, I think people look at him because he's a white guy. They look at him as like, oh, he oh, he's this big platform, which he does have a he does have a wide range platform. But he's not necessarily like he's not necessarily beloved in the journalism community and in broadcasting or anything like that. Like, it, I think people look at him as kind of like. You know, the content that he makes is it's just for shock value. You know what I mean? Like he's he's a British Tucker Car Carlson, you know what I'm saying? Like who you know what I mean? He doesn't have yeah, you know I mean he might sound a little smart, whatever, but he doesn't really have the talent and things like that. And like a lot of the stuff that he publishes and puts out there is all it's it's kind of clickbaity. It's he's kind of yeah, like like Torre. Torre put out something that was basically calling him a hack, which that's what a lot of people in journalism look at Piers Morgan. Like they look at him as like, like we don't we don't take you seriously, whatever. So like, like although he is a you know he's a white guy, whatever, that doesn't mean he's not Peter Jennings. You know what I'm saying? Like you know that's an old reference, or he's not Dan Rather, another old reference. He's not even David Muir, like that would be a newer guy, you know what I mean? So like somebody that like he's not he's not Don Lemon, which he, I know he don't necessarily um he's not employed by CNN anymore or like Jake Tapper or Cuomo, like he's not on that he's not quite on that level. So it's not the same as like uh her showing up on CNN, which CNN or MSNBC or Fox, or even Fox News. Fox News is not even going to entertain somebody like that because they don't want. Um, they they gotta you gotta you gotta stick your you gotta stick your neck out for somebody like her, and they don't want to stake their reputation on somebody who is saying things but has no proof, like has no real proof. Whatever it's a lot of her what she's saying is just all circumstantial. It's all empirical. She feels because she was a sex worker, you know, she can speak on this topic. And that's fine because maybe there were times where she felt like a victim. I and mean, we're talking about Diddy more so than Jay-Z, whatever. But like, you know, she felt like a victim and she was in that world. So she she does feel bad. I, I can I generally say that she probably does feel bad for the women that are going through whatever they're going through. But. She also has nothing to lose. So that's where y'all, that's where I think y'all missing the point in, in the fact that like some of the stuff that she's saying, she has nothing to lose. If she would get sued, right? One, it'd be defamation. Again, it's not just about whether the claims are false. You have to prove that it's hurt. It hurts your, your, your livelihood, right? She ain't hurt nobody's pockets, man. Like all the stuff that she's saying, she don't hurt nobody's pockets. So it's not even a defamation there. But also, you wouldn't get nothing from you, you don't really get nothing from Jaguar, right? Um file, you know, filing for defamation a lot of times. And again, the cease and desist, she doesn't even have she doesn't even have her own platform. And that's what I'm saying. She has nothing to lose. She's willing to just drop these bombs, right? These these bombs on other people's platforms, putting other people's platforms at risk. You know what I'm saying? And I think, you know, we're going to see her kind of go back into the YouTube rabbit holes. You know what I mean? Into the YouTube caves of, of you know, I would say um, uncredible, you know, uncredible sources, unreliable sources. 
Um, until until we get some facts, right? Until we get some facts. So, so yes, th there was not a cease and desist on her, but that's not how it works, right? She didn't publish. She didn't publish the interview with Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan and his people publish it. So that's who gets the cease and desist. The people who put it out. Until she's now, she started her own platform. Like if she started her, like she probably has a YouTube channel, but like if she started making content on her own platform. Her whole page will probably get shut down for her. Like, like, let's stop playing. Like, like if we really calling it what it is. And now, the only thing is with social media today, people wouldn't take that as like, oh, see, like she's not speaking. She's she. They wouldn't take it as as if like that's a measure to stop someone from telling lies. People would look at that as a measure of like, see, they're trying to hide the truth. So, you know, why else would they take her down? Well, it's because she's a crackhead, bro. Like, she's a fiend, bro. Like, she, she's she's not well. If you've seen, um, I, I don't know why they're on, I don't know what entity or what, what platform they're on, but Orlando Brown is on something with her, and they both sound like they on drugs. They both sound slow. Uh, I just seen this other little clip where it was like her son, right? And people were like, oh my God, there's a son? Like there's another one of that? And yeah, he's also, he also sound like he he all kind of special and stuff like that. So I I don't know, man. I think y'all got to really, we got to really take a lot of that type of stuff with a grain of salt. And I think we need to, you know, sometimes people need to kind of verse themselves into like what these processes look like and what they don't look like. And yes. The season decision is gonna to go to Piers Morgan because he put it out there, and and if y'all thought that this was gonna help her grow or or this was gonna get out to bigger entities, it likely won't because they're not gonna to want to touch her. Like she's gonna to have to come with receipts. Like she's gonna to have to come with actual hard fact evidence, and I don't think she has that. I just don't think she does. So, uh, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? So let's let's get started though with with the show. Um, I did want to talk about this new J. Cole song, but I have not had a chance to break it down. But basically, J. Cole dropped a new song where he um, addresses the beef right between Kendrick and Drake. And when I look on on like the streaming services like, you know, Spotify and things like that, they don't actually have a published song of it. So I know this this was released on his page, like it was an Instagram page and he put it out. But like, I don't this is not. It's not a full track yet, so it might be something that drops Friday. Like it might be something that drops, um, and and something that we could stream. Um, but yeah, I want to do a little bit of a, a bar breakdown of that, and just kind of just give my overall opinion. But we don't we don't have that quite yet. So, um, let's get started though with the main thing, um, which is there's more now now where is there's more to the Diddy, Diddy saga, right? So now we are entering the courtrooms, right? And um, today was the first little hearing, and I guess like a pre-trial type conference, pre-trial hearing, and Diddy was in court. Diddy was in court today, or uh, he was in court on Thursday, uh, the tenth, and um, the court date is already set for uh, I believe it's May, sometime in May. I don't I don't want to get the date wrong, but so and you know the articles that I seen it was saying like oh well Diddy looks like he's gonna have a busy spring, All right? Busy busy spring. So. Um, yeah, man. So, so they're talking about, you know, kind of putting their case together. The prosecution is saying that they need about three weeks to put, to, to finalize and put together their full case. And the defense is like saying like, yo, we, all we need is a week. And we, I mean, we think our man is good or, or we can come up with a defense, uh, sooner than that. So, um, one of the things that, that is coming out though is um one of the things that's coming out is the fact that they're they they're looking through they're trying to figure out all these devices that have like information on it right so so uh one of the things that i read was talking about how um i think there was like there's like 96 different like electronic devices that they have already started to like kind of sift through and they are running into some snags though. So so some of the problems um kind of have to do with the fact that um some of the newer hard drives are like a little bit harder to impenetrate, right? So they're hard some of the some of the devices are are hard to kind of uh, encrypt and get through. 
um, some some of these devices are broken, and then um, some of them are older devices that they don't currently have the right technology to kind of get into some of these devices. So, um, and some of that stuff includes like phones and things like that that he has. So they are going to be looking through all this different content, and it's a lot in what we call I guess what they call discovery, like in terms of like the evidence. There's going to be a lot of different pieces that they got to sift through. And but they are having some trouble. They are having some trouble. So one of the things that I seen was that um and and this is kind of going both sides right now, whatever. But Diddy, um, he now they're they're planning to try to sue the Department of Homeland Security, right? And they're claiming that the time that basically the claim is that the timing of the Cassie leak uh was just um it, it was it was there to kind of like a smear campaign. It was there to tarnish his reputation or whatever. So the problem with with this defense though is the fact that like he ain't saying that it was it's not, you know, it's not like he's trying to deny him being on the tape, whatever. And it's not even trying to deny that what he what he did in the tape is bad or illegal. He's just mad at like how it's making him look and like there's some type of ulterior motive with with this. And I just don't know if that's enough. I don't know if that's enough to 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 get an investigation. But like you think about it, Diddy's going through civil civil cases. He's obviously facing a criminal criminal charge. And now he's trying to be on the offensive and he's trying to basically sue these government entities and these agencies and basically trying to question how they kind of did their job and how they started this investigation and what he'll probably, he probably calls this all a witch hunt, which most of us are looking like, oh, I don't know if it's a witch hunt, bro. It, it, you know, they are probably trying to get you out of here, but where there's smoke, there's fire. And like, there's obviously smoke even with that. So, so that's what kind of what's going on. So like, so so then on the flip side, the prosecution is like, yo, we don't really, you know, I mean, like, um, you know, Diddy's legal defense is making us look like we're very prejudicial and like they're trying to make this about race. Right. They're trying to make this about race. So like knowing that all this is in the media, it's going to like it's going to it's going to sway jurors. Right. So that and that's another thing, too. This is something that's so high profile. I can't imagine when they have to pick like jurors and things like that. Um, one, I, I think um, Diddy's defense, they're going to make sure like it is a it is a, a, a jury of his peers. Right. So they're going to definitely be eliminating jurors and kind of handpicking as much as they can handpick. Um, but it's going to be hard for people to like, you know, maybe easier to stay out of the media when the case is going on. But it's going to be hard for people to like just simply ignore and be like, no, I don't know nothing about this. I don't know anything about this. And what I'm, and, you know, I don't know exactly who, who Diddy's team is, but um, like, I, you know, I got, he don't have a Johnny Cochran on his side, but you know, if they do, or if they are able to kind of flip the perception on of of the general public and if they can make it look like the investigation itself is racist right you know we might get a johnny cochran oj simpson type thing where it's like no it's clear you know it looks like a lot of clear evidence but we're able to make it look like you know it, it's 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 unfair what we're what we're doing or or how they investigated this as opposed to like actually what diddy may or may not have done so that's the thing. So this this whole case is is we got three layers. Again, we got the criminal case, we got the civil cases that are still going on, and then now you got Diddy is trying to sue and basically basically sue for some oversight and making sure like they are following the the letter of the law. So I don't know. What do you think? What do you think about that? Do you think that um, Diddy kind of has a leg to stand on when it comes to some of that type of stuff? Like, do you feel that um like it's, it's an accurate description of of how kind of things went down or it, are they kind of are they just kind of desperate and kind of grasping for straws i don't know what do you think we think let me know in the comment section below let me know all right um next thing next thing before i hold on okay just making sure okay 
All right, so next thing, I just wanted to kind of address, um, I wanted to address uh, Love is Blind, Love is Blind. So Love is Blind is back, and, you know, we you've, you've seen me and Levi do the Love is Blind, and we did another love show as well. We we did the Love is Blind, and I think we did, we covered season five, and season five of Love is Blind is the worst season of Love is Blind on record. Like, it's it was bad, it was bad. So then season six came out and like season six was crazy. Like it was like lit, lit, like it was like crazy. So then when Levi, when we was doing recap and record for, for House of the Dragon, you know, Levi was like, yo, October, love is blind. And I was like, man, we can't, man, we can't do it. We can't do it. So how do I feel? So you're, I'm, I'm going to talk about love is blind, but I, I'm not obviously going to give you a full episode by episode breakdown. I might come back to it next week and we talk about like what has transpired a little bit, but, but I can't give the full break at breakdown like I would with my man Levi. So, but love is blind, man. So, so far I would say it's okay. Like I, I don't think it's bad yet because the reason why season five was so bad was because, well, they had a lot of scandal. They had a lot of controversy, but then ultimately only one couple got married. So like it, it looked it looked really bad. Um, what I'm seeing so far, maybe I'm passively watching it because I am trying to watch it, right? But like I don't know, man. See, this is the seventh season of Love Is Blind, and what I say is that they just I don't know. There needs to be some type of change to the show a little bit because this pod stage is just not dynamic at all. Like it's it's getting more boring and boring i think at, from season to season like the pod stage is getting boring now i ain't gonna lie the the season five it that's why it seemed season five seemed like it was gonna be good because we had we had all this like controversy where like they you know they figured out who this person was but after that after the pods in season five, it it the the whole shit went went to shit. Like it was it was just like weak. Um, so season six was definitely better throughout the whole throughout the whole joint. Whatever. Uh, I'm trying to think. Season. No, yeah, yeah, no. Season six was good. Um, yeah, season six was really good. But season five, we had we did have some controversy there. And it just was like, uh, you know, it just it just didn't sit well. But but like I feel like they need to do something. They need to add a wrinkle or something like that into the pod stage because one thing I've always been saying is that like, yo, you got all these people, you got all these people. So like, we I want to see more like more of like the bad dates and things like that. I want to see and. My my requests are not getting heard. Like nobody wants. I guess nobody wants to see that. Like, cause I thought you know that that was the when we used to watch American Idol back in the day. Now I know American Idol is still a thing, but when we used to watch it back in the day, when it was a brand new thing, those first couple episodes was the best part. Like all the bloopers and all the people that gets eliminated. Um, I guess in a dating show, it's hard to see that type of stuff. But I just feel like. You know right away, you know who who these people are kind of going after, right? You already know right away, and they're they're showing some people that that you just see them with that other person. You don't even see them with anybody else. So like it does feel like it's already narrowed down. Um, there's two former guests that are that they have their own podcast. One of one of them is Deep T, and then the other and it's another girl. Uh, I think she might have been from like season three or four. Um, Asian girl, I think it was season three, um, or two maybe. Yeah, season three, season three, season three. And um, you know, they they have they had this podcast and they kind of talk about you know the dynamics of it, whatever. And what they said was that no, actually, like way more couples than the five. Like maybe if there's five couples that go through, six couples that go through, she said there's like way more that actually get picked. Um, or, or there's way more that that actually like make it through, but they don't necessarily get picked to to be recorded. And they referenced that like the UK Love Is Blind, they had like 11, 11 couples or something like that that they depicted, and they talked about how like well, it's hard to like create storylines around eleven different couples, right? Like that almost becomes a little bit too much. It makes me want to go back and watch the UK version, right, just to see what what the heck they're talking about. So, so. 
Um, I'm at a stage where I'm only on episode, I think I'm on episode four, and they're still in the pods, right? We do have some proposals, um, but we are still in the pods. And like again, it's just like I I get the essence of this. I just it is still hard for me to wrap my head around do like being able to do something like this, like um try to commit to somebody in a relationship to somebody that you never actually seen. Like it just, it just don't, it just don't feel real. It just don't feel real. And we're getting a lot of like, it's, it, we're getting some weird dynamics. Like we're getting people that are attractive, like, and would be attractive in normal dating settings. We're getting the attractive people coming on here. Like, like love is blind used to be kind of low key, like about ugly ducklings. Like, like it used to be about the ugly duckling and like about personality and like that personality shining. Um, so like it would be people that, you know, you didn't, maybe they didn't look the best or maybe they weren't traditionally attractive and things like that. But now we're getting, basically we're getting, we're getting better looking people that have lower self-esteem now on love is blind. Right. We're getting these better looking people that are like, no, I just want to, or it's like a, it's like a role reversal. And they're like, yeah, you know, I, that's all I used to date for was looks. And now I want to date for personality. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, bro, get out of here. Get out of here. Uh, what I would say, I don't, and, and so like, this, this is why this is not recap and record. Cause I don't know any of the names. I knew like, I know like two names, whatever, but I don't really know any of the names of, of these contestants. But I would say like the the couples that are the like the black couples, they seem to be pretty straightforward. Like I haven't seen too much variation and like too much um, you know what I mean? Like like these are the people that we've seen them with from the beginning, you know what I mean? So like they kind of have stayed the course and I think they're gonna be they're gonna be solid for the most part, at least you know, as they're depicted. Um some of these, some of these other couples though. Um, they look in a little bit of a mess. Um, and some of these like interracial dynamics here, they just, I don't know. I just, they don't, they feel a little bit, they feel a little bit strange to me. There was a one guy talking about him discovering his ancestry. And when I look at him, I'm like, I oh, got some curly hair. Maybe you got a round off, rounded off nose. But like he was talking about, you know, he, he thought he was Italian and found out his dad was three-fifths black. And I'm like, well, I don't know how those percentages work. I think we need to do a fact check, whatever, because I read somewhere or heard somewhere that, like, when you do Ancestry.com, um, when when they give you, like, these, these, nation, these countries, it's not actually the makeup of who you are and your actual DNA. There's, there's another factor in there. Now, when I get that fact, I'm going to come back with it. But, like... It's not exactly what you see, what it seems to be. So, like, he found all these, like, African type of, you know, origins. And so, like, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm black. I'm black. I, even though I identify as white. And I'm like, oh, you look, you still look white, bro. Like, so, uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if he bags his shorty. I mean, it was, it was a young sister. Um, and then we get, there's this, all right, there's this, like, love triangle, love square. There's this one guy who's, like, an art dealer. There's this like down to earth girl named Hannah, and then there's this kind of low key bougie girl named Brittany. Now Brittany is an esthetician, and and she kind of comes in, came into the show talking about somehow, you know, she would just seduce guys and she can get any guy that she wants. Hannah is definitely that personality girl. She's a little thicker, and obviously though she has some insecurities about her size and her image and things like that. Um, and then you got uh, yeah, the art dealer guy who keeps bragging about how blessed he has been financially and but doesn't want women to like him for his money. But then like it's telling certain people what he does and then not telling certain women what he does. And then you got this guy, Nick D, who has been a smooth talker throughout this whole thing. But um, and he actually played some football, but he was a kicker and punter. So like these four are going through it. And the art dealer guy is like he's really playing both sides. He's really playing both sides real hard. And it's, it's kind of looking a little bit wild, but like, he's like yelling at the second girl. Hannah's like, like, I told you, I love you. Like, like, what are you doing? You're going to be, you're making a mistake. And, and even though he didn't really, you know, he don't even fully know what he wants. So like, I just, you know, it's, it is what it is. So like, yeah, like we were saying, um, we definitely gotta have some people that are a little bit on the fence. And I just think I just think that the show needs needs some they need to add something to the show 
to just make it a little bit more interesting, like a little a new rule or something like that. I, I, I can't think off the top of my head what they should do instead, but it just needs it needs a, a, some new flavor. And like just having new new guests and new contestants is just not enough. Like there needs to be. I don't know. There needs to be something else. There needs to be something a little bit um, different um, that just makes it, that just kind of draws us in. And I just feel like they're kind of dropping the ball a little bit. But um, what do you think? What do you think so far? Love is blind. Again, I don't even know names yet. I don't know who's fully in this, but we're going we gonna to learn. We're going to learn with the rest of y'all what's going on and, and how everything is transpiring, though. Um, moving on, moving on. Um, you know, we got a hurricane going on right now, Hurricane Milton. And, you know, so, you know, first off, man, we want to, we want to, I guess, pray and hope and wish and, and, and send our regards to, to our brothers and sisters that's down in Florida, right? So I know we all know somebody that's living in Florida, uh, whether, you know, a, 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 any capacity, right? We, we have friends and family and loved ones down there. And um, this this floor this this hurricane um, it's like two hurricanes. It's like you had you had Helene first, and then now you have Milton. And the way that it was it was wild because the the mayor of Tampa, she had got on a couple of days um, prior to it hitting, and she was saying how like yo if people do not evacuate they will die. And they said that storm surges could go up to like fifteen feet. And like talking about like the water, like the water being 15 feet. And like they said, even at like six feet, nine feet, like that's like you, it's hardly, it's hard to survive that. Um, but 15 feet, it'd be like, it's crazy. So like millions of people right now are, are without power. The storm did kind of on Thursday, it kind of ran through there and it was, it was a little bit lighter than what they thought. But like, you know, these things, you know, these things change a lot. There's been a lot of narratives about about this um, that have gone even gone political. You got you got Donald Trump saying that like uh, the the Biden administration is not sending them funds, but then you have Ron DeSantis, who's also a Republican. He kind of debunked that, and he's he's basically fact checking Donald Trump and saying that like no, they're getting everything that they need. Um, you got people like Marjorie Taylor Greene talking about. People are controlling the weather and that like only certain people are being affected by it. And it's just like it's a, that's just a weird, odd conversation. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But but um, hopefully, man, hopefully people are, are able to like salvage, you know, some of what they have or, or like a lot of what they have. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely hitting Tampa. It's hitting St. Petersburg. Um, and it even affected um, the the Devil Rays their their stadium. So they have a dome, and it just it just decimated the the cloth uh, roof of that dome. And they were putting they were actually housing first first responders there, not like not refugees. Nobody's a refugee at this point yet, but um, they had to they had to um, get. Uh, I guess they had to put them in a different place now, but that's where the first responders were going to be. They were going to be in Tropicana Field or the Dome, and but now that has to change a little bit. Um, there's a lot of talk about evacuation money, right? So, and and I don't know where they come up with these figures, but there's a lot of people that are saying that like, yo, we need four thousand dollars, you know, four thousand dollars, or or there's a lot of people saying that like, yo, you need to get out of there, stop being dumb, and then people are like, yo. What are you talking about being dumb? Like, how do you, how do you just evacuate? How do you like you need money to evacuate because you don't know how long you're gonna be going. So like, you need lodging for however that that length of time is. You need gas to get to from point A to point B. And what I'm hearing is that like a lot of people from Florida are like, yo, there's there's hardly any gas in some of these gas stations. Um, it's hard. It's like the traffic jams are crazy. Uh, and, and, you know, it just seems to be like a lot. So it's like, it, there's definitely, uh, different, differing sides of opinions of, on like, what's the best course of action. And nobody seems to be on the, on the same page here. So they got it. They got to They got to straighten some things out and get things right. But, um, hopefully, man, we can get some relief to these people and, and people can go back to living a somewhat normal life again. So. But um, man, again, our prayers and and hopes and and wishes, man, are for um all the people 
that are in Florida dealing with hurricanes. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't live in hurricane weather, man. I can't, I could not do that. I could not live in a place where hurricanes, I would take snow over a hurricane any day of the week, um, even on Sundays, you know what I'm saying? So like, it is what it is, but you know, you know, people got to live down south, I guess, you know what I'm saying? So, but all right, let's move on. Let's move on. And then last thing that we're going to talk about is some NFL stories. So um, if y'all know this, man, um, yeah, early this week, early, early after week five, um, going into week six of the NFL season, uh, there was a coaching vacancy, right? So this is not normal. Like, so normally coaches don't get fired. Like, they're, they're coaches that get fired midseason, but, like, it's kind of rare. It had to be coming prior to then, whatever. But Robert Sala of the New York Jets, right, has gotten fired. And it is it has sparked a lot of controversy and talking points and things like that. And um, so Robert Sala has been with the team for the last three and a half years. And you know who they're blaming for this firing? They're blaming none other than Aaron Rodgers. So Aaron Rodgers, um, I, I, blame, I blame ownership, really. And I blame um, their, I don't know, I would say lack of a GM. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously they they spend they have spent a lot of money on some pieces, and they spend a lot of money on defense, right? Um, there are definitely some holes on their offensive squad. You know, they do have some talent though. You know, I mean, you got, got having a guy like Brees Hall, having a guy like uh, Garrett Wilson, right? Like having these key players and maybe even some linemen and stuff like that. That's dope. And you know, but like, and even the idea of getting Aaron Rodgers is dope. But um, I think they put they put a little bit too much of their eggs in one basket with Aaron Rodgers, right? Uh, and, and also too, like a lot of people are blaming Aaron Rodgers for the for the firing. Like they're like, oh, we know, we know that he had to be in the 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 owner's ear, and he got he basically got him fired. Now there's no proof to that, but but he did say that he did talk to the owner the night before. He didn't say that the the owner talked about uh, Robert Sala though. He basically just said that the owner was asking about his personal health because he got rolled up on. Um, I don't know if this is Robert Sala's fault. I I can't tell. It's hard to tell when a team when a coach coaches a bad team. It's hard to tell if he's a good or bad coach. It's hard to tell until he goes somewhere else, which the typically the trajectory is like. All right, you go from coordinator, you get elevated to head coach. If you do bad, then you go back down to being coordinator, and then maybe, just maybe, you get another shot at being a head coach, or maybe that shot never comes again. Um, sometimes these guys that get demoted, they end up leaving, they go to college or something like that. So we'll see where Robert Sala ends up landing. But when he was the coordinator for the 49ers, we thought that they had like the fiercest defense ever. You know what I'm saying? One of the fiercest defense ever. So like he's definitely a defensive minded coach. Defensive minded coaches don't typically do to me. I don't think they typically do well as head coaches, though. Like I feel like, you know, you need you still need an offensive mind to 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 run the show overall. But like I said, we'll see where he lands. Um, I'm trying to think with the Jets. Did anything else happen? Did anything else happen? Well, here's the thing. So they fire him after you know, and what are they? Let's see the Jets record. Are they one and four? Let's see. I'm just going to check this real quick. New York Jets. All right. The New York Jets. Ah, come on, man. The New York Jets are two and three. It's not over. If they was on five, I, okay. One and four, maybe, but like two and three. Like you didn't, you didn't even give him a chance. So that's that's the part of the thing that's wild is that like this is Aaron Rodgers technically his first year. Like last year was a wash. He he only played four plays, and then now he's only had five weeks. So five weeks and four plays of Robert Sala being his coach. They are two and three, right? And you know they it's not like they they've you know they've been in the mix in in some of these games. Even even the game last week against Minnesota. You're blaming Robert Sala for that loss when Aaron Rodgers is who, literally who lost in the game. So Aaron Rodgers, 
right? You pay him, you pay him to to make the two minute drives to to get you wins, right? To get you wins. So like they had a chance, right? They're down by six points. They they had the last drive. They're driving down the, the field. They're in the red zone. And then Aaron Rodgers throws a pick, right? So so even if it's and and Robert Sala doesn't even call the plays. Nathaniel Hackett was calling the plays, whatever. So like it's not that it's I don't I don't know how you put it all on Robert Sala and you know uh Aaron Rodgers saying the right things talking about like oh man like whoever thinks I'm champion this is wrong you know what I mean this is a family man he got seven kids but like you what did you do to lobby for your coach though did you do anything because like it's just some random person not I won't say some random person but like somebody that within the ranks having to move up that's just a, I feel like that's a more uphill battle. And like you basically, you basically decided to kind of throw your season away, um, at two and three though. At two and three, you, you're already deciding like you're, you're hanging it up, you're throwing in the towel, and I just think it's like way too soon for that. So, what do you think about that firing? What do you think? Um, another headline, and this is probably where we're gonna start wrapping it up though. But Joe Mixon, man, Joe Mixon got hurt in like week two. And um, he's been he's being very critical of the NFL and he's calling out he's calling BS and he's talking about hypocrisy. Right. So this offseason, they made a they made an example and an emphasis to get rid of the hip drop tackle. So the hip drop tackle is like, you know, it's when, you know, maybe a guy is dragging you and you have a hold of that player a lot of times by the waist or something like that. And like. You use your body weight to bring them down. So it's not just it's not just like you trying to slam them. It's like literally you're dropping your body and then that's 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 um getting them down to the ground. The problem with this kind of tackle is that when guys do it, they use their legs to kind of like almost like catch or entangle the other player. So like so not only are you dropping your hip, but like you're using your legs to kind of help bring them down. And what's happening is guys are getting tangled up. And they're they're hurting themselves like they're getting all kinds of broken up ankles, tibias, fibulas and stuff like that. Like they're like they're 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 breaking stuff. They're breaking stuff because it's not a natural form tackle. So Joe Mixon is is being because he feels like when he got hit um, in his game, it was a hip drop tackle and they didn't even they didn't even throw the flag. He even said to the ref, where's the flag? at? That's a hip drop tackle. And then they said, no, it's not. So what he's what he's pointing out is the hypocrisy. So um the player who gave him the hip drop job tackle or the player that the player is facing, because they even looked at it again, and I guess they are deeming it as a hip drop tackle, but that player is only being fined sixteen thousand dollars, right? But like his own teammate Nico Collins got got fined almost fifty K. Um Jacobs, Josh Jacobs almost got fined fifty K. And these are guys and they were on the offense and they were like kind of protecting themselves. And they kind of they kind of talked about the helmet, the helmet type type thing, leading with the crown. But it's like he's like, yo, if if there's a rule that's a point of emphasis and you're trying to get it out of the game, then you have to like the fine or whatever is associated with it has to match that. You can't have the fine for a a, a play that we're trying to eliminate and it's supposed to be a point of emphasis. We can't have. We can't have, uh, you know, that fine be less than like some stuff where it's kind of bang bang, or it's a it's a it's literally a play where you're trying to protect yourself and things like that. So, um, I don't know. I think I think I think he does have something there. I think he does have a valid um argument about it, and um, they gotta yeah, man, we gotta we gotta switch some things up. We gotta switch some things up. So. Um, what do you think, man? What do you think? This was a quick episode, short episode. I did have some stuff I did want to kind of talk about, um, probably at a later date. You know, when when we get some more developments, but we're gonna we're gonna keep on rocking, man. We're gonna keep on rocking. Um, if you, I I guess like this last shots, last shots. Um, you know they're saying that. Um, uh, before we go, before we go, just just some things I heard through the grapevine, and it might be true, but. You know, one of the things that they're saying is that, you know, Cardi B, when Cardi B was, you know, when Offset is saying that she slept around while she was pregnant, you know who they're saying is the is the person that might have slept with her? They're saying it, it's, it might be 
it might be Stephon Diggs, right? Wide receiver of the Houston Texans, Joe Mixon's other uh, uh, teammate, and his, and you know both him and Mixon came near together. But um, yeah, they're saying this is Stephon Diggs, and I'm thinking like, dang, man, these these uh these rapper baby moms sure love some Diggs brothers because what Joey Chavis is with uh Trevon Diggs, right? And then you know. Maybe, maybe Stefan Diggs, um, maybe he did smash Cardi, maybe he didn't. But if she was eight months pregnant, she's trifling for that. Like she's just trifling for that. Not trifling for having sex, but definitely trifling for having sex with another man. Um, eight months in. Like that's just oh, eight months into your pregnancy. That's that just seems like way, 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 way too late. Way too late. I'm trying to think, man, is there anything else? Is there anything else that we gotta cover that we did not cover? I think we're good, man. I think we're pretty much good. Oh, oh, real quick, real quick. Deion Cole, man. I love Deion Cole. And um <laughs> he talking about how some like, yo, never, never if you if which I don't never have to worry about this because I ain't I ain't famous or I'm probably not gonna be famous to this level. But he's like, yo, you don't ever mess with don't ever hit nothing after Shaq. I mean, he said he dated this girl that used to date Shaq. And he said that, like, it is, uh, yeah, he said it was hollow. He said it was traumatizing. He said it was it was not a good look. So, I, yeah, I mean, don't it, it, he, he, he was a little bit too descriptive that made you think about, like, oh, what the heck? Like, why, why are you talking about that? But we, we know what he means, and that, is, that does sound horrific. You know what I mean? And I just, just think about your shorty right now, whoever she is. Like her letting Shaq hit, bro. Like that's oh my god, that would be a nightmare, bro. That'd be a nightmare. But uh, what do you think, man? What do you think about this week's episode? What did we talk about, man? We talked about um a little bit about the hurricane. Uh, we talked a little bit about. We just mentioned that J Cole does have a new song. We're gonna get into that. Diddy and his his legal issues and how now we're back. We're in court and we're about to we're about to get a case and things are about to start building up. A little bit about Love is Blind. Uh, oh, and, and we did just clarify some stuff with Jer about Jaguar Wright. And then some of these NFL stories, though, man. So what'd you think about this week's episode, man? You know, let me know. Let me know in the comment section. If you're new to the channel, I need you to hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Again, share the content. Leave a comment. Um, this is episode 166 of the Twitty Plus Podcast, y'all. I'm out, y'all. Peace.